security? There's a ton of content out there, and if you don't know where to start, it can be overwhelming, even paralyzing. So let's fix that. Welcome to Simply Cyber, a community of tens of thousands of aspiring and active cybersecurity professionals focused on networking, knowledge sharing, and professional development. I'm Dr. Gerald Dozier, Chief Content Creator at Simply Cyber, inviting you to get the answers to your cybersecurity problems with hundreds of cybersecurity videos answering your frequently asked questions, interviewing industry experts, and live streaming daily cyber threat briefings hosted by me. Now get the stories and insights you won't find anywhere else. Hit subscribe now and dig into all the fresh content on the channel and in the community. Nothing should stop you from launching and leveling up your cybersecurity career today. Good morning, everybody. What's up? Welcome to the party. It is Monday, April 8th, 2024. Coming at you hot. This is Simply Cyber's Daily Cyber Threat Brief Podcast, episode number 595. I am your host, Dr. Gerald Ozier. And over the next 45 minutes, me, you, Marcus Kyler, the Yeet Crew, yeah. Jesse Johnson, Kimberly from the Couch, De Niro, Laura Flores, Alana Boyajian, the GRC Pro herself, D. Barry, not only IT, Valentino. All those blue badges, all the squad members, folks over on LinkedIn like Raymond Cruz and Logan Fuller, folks over on YouTube like you, we're all going to be sharing the top cybersecurity news stories of the day, and I'll be giving my expert opinion and analysis on each of those stories on what it means to you as a practitioner. So how can you use this information to drive cyber risk reduction for your business stakeholders and absolutely dominate at work? Or if you're looking to break in the industry, don't worry, there's tons of people in here who are looking to pivot in or already have. And you will be asked in any job interview, how do you stay current? Right here is a banger of an answer. On top of that, the networking is phenomenal. Look at this. We already got 150 people in here in the first 30 seconds. It's going to creep up to close to 500. Shout out to TCM Security, who did a little video on places to get your cyber in, uh, info and news. And guess what? Simply Cyber was mentioned. Very, very cool. Thank you so very much. Now, before we get into it, I want you to know if you're a, re a regular, it's already well known, but if you're a newcomer, I do not prepare or research for any of these stories. So we'll be going through about eight stories. I don't even know what they are. I saw, I think, the headline on maybe a few of them. But guys, it takes a lot of work to do all this. So I'm not sitting here like throwing on my glasses and like reflecting on what's about to happen. So you're going to get my raw, raw, raw opinion. And that's okay because I've been in the industry a long time and I'm uber passionate about cybersecurity. So there'll be some nuggets of value. And of course, the community yourself, you're all in here. Listen to what they say, because a lot of times um, everybody's bringing a lot of perspective, a lot of in, in, um, insights from their perspective into the chat. So I absolutely love it. Now, before I get into it, I do want to say shout out and thanks to the stream sponsor, starting with Barricade Cyber and Anti-Siphon. Now, one thing I would like to do, um, just in all reality, because... Uh, Barricade Cyber, Eric Taylor has been a uh, sponsor for a very long time. He's a member of the community. He's part of the mod team. He is uh, fills in for me from time to time when I'm unavailable. And, uh, you know, he's even got a sound effect on the board. All right. So many of you may have seen the news already on social media. Uh, unfortunately, Hunter uh, Taylor, Eric's son, um, uh, I guess lost his battle might be the way to put it. Um, tough decision, very tough time, uh, for the Taylor family right now as they grieve and, um, deal through this, uh, just unbelievably unfair and, uh, tragic ordeal. So, um, if instead of reading the, um, the, uh, the ad read, I'd like to just take a moment of silence for Hunter and for the whole Taylor family. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, not that Eric really wants to, uh, you know, have a bunch of eyes on him and stuff like that. But if you are interested, um, Ashley Yates has put together uh, kind of like a meal train thing to help Eric and his family be able to focus on what's important instead of uh, instead of what is um, instead of food. So 
this has been uh, posted there. And uh, I just dropped a link in chat. So. All right. So if you're into that, go for it. Thank you. Also want to say shout out to the stream sponsor, Anti-Siphon Training. Anti-Siphon Training, uh, if they're just straight crushing it. A community that cares, providing traditional cybersecurity training in, a, in a, just a disruptive way, offering it uh, to everyone regardless of financial position. They offer their students the opportunity to learn skills, practice what is taught, and engage with the community in a fun and inclusive way. Anti-Siphon Training, links in the description below. All right. If you are a regular here, then you are well aware that each episode of the Daily Cyber Threat Brief is worth half a CPE. So <clears throat> be sure to say what's up in track, grab a screenshot, file it away, half a CPE per day, one or 10 a month, uh, two and a half a week. It, they stack up basically. So just go ahead, scoop those up um, and, um, and uh, when CPEs come around, just take care of it, okay? If you are live, love it. Thank you so very much for being here. I am a huge, huge fan of all of you. Uh, bring in the heat. It is Monday, which means we have a special, um, we have a special um, meme. Uh, God, I'm all sorts of, uh, out of sorts. We have a special uh, event every day. Mondays is uh, Simply Cyber Community Member of the Week. I want you all to know um, we got a great one today. I'm super pumped. And... Um, and uh, stay tuned for the mid-roll, and that's what we're going to get into, okay? If you're live, love it. Thanks for being here. Hashtag Team SC in chat. If you're a member of the community, if you're a member of the community, hashtag Team SC in chat. Hashtag Team SC in chat. If you're a first-timer, hashtag first-timer in chat, please. Hashtag first-timer in chat. The 595 episodes so far. But this could be your first one. And spoiler alert, we got a special, we've got a special um, sound effect and a special emote for you if it is your first time. But now, my friends, what I would love for you to do is sit back, relax, and let's let the cool sounds Mercy! of the hot news wash over us in an awesome way. I'll see you at the From mid-roll. The CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. These are the cybersecurity headlines for Monday, April 8th. 2024. I'm Steve Prentice. Hey, Ryan Christie over on LinkedIn. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal. I think we might have a bunch of first timers today just because TCM made that video. So everybody, if you see him, say hello to him. Drop those emotes. To the if you're a squad party, member and uh, <laughs> Michelle Dane, team very long time. And that blue badge agrees. U.S. government warns hospitals <clears throat> of hackers targeting IT help desks. This warning comes from the Health Sector Cybersecurity Coordination Center and states that, quote, hackers are using social engineering tactics to target IT help desks across the healthcare and public health sector, end quote. Hackers are accessing their targets by enrolling their own multi-factor authentication devices with the primary goal currently of stealing funds. According to Bleeping Computer, the threat actors use a local area code to call organizations, including using voice cloning techniques, and pretend to be employees in the financial department. They provide stolen ID verification details, including corporate ID and social security numbers. Using this sensitive information and claiming their smartphone is broken, they convince the IT help desk to enroll a new device in MFA under the attacker's control. No group has yet been associated with these attacks, but the name Scattered Spider Scattered does spider. keep coming up. Yeah, no kidding. Scattered Spider keeps coming up. This this was Scattered Spider's M.O. If you are not familiar with uh, Scattered Spider, they're the ones who hit uh, MGM Resorts and Caesars uh, last summer, I believe. And um, they attacked the same way. This is what, dude, when we say TTPs, right? Uh, I always get it wrong and chat always explodes on me. Uh, tactics, techniques, and procedures. <laughs> um, that, that is the deal. Like threat actors aren't going to change. Um, if, if their technique works, why would they change it? Right. If you're really great at like a, um, you know, a pull up jumper, like all of a sudden you're going to start raining threes down or you're going to start driving the basket. Right. If I can get a little, a little basketball 
metaphor, since we're about to enter, um, you know, the NBA playoffs and uh, the Celtics are uh, pretty good. Um, no, if you're good at something, you keep doing it. You know why? Straight cash, homie. Straight cash, homie. And because you, it works. Again, like if something works, you're not going to change it. This is Scattered Spiders MO. This, in the words of uh, BSEC, I would agree. If you don't know your help desk people yet, you better go uh, go hang out with them for a hot minute and educate them on this. This is an opportunity to very specifically educate a very specific population who, by the way, is predisposed to be helpful. They are there to help the person on the phone, which includes threat actors, right? So you've got to be very clear about... Um, you know, basically workflows and processes for resetting creds, for adding new authenticators. Uh, Space Tacos with a gifted sub. Thanks, Space Tacos. Let's become best friends. Yeah. <laughs> if you're one of those 10 new members, Eric Taylor's gift was gifted a membership by Space Tacos. Eric Taylor was gifted a Space Tacos. That can't be the same Eric Taylor, is it? If it is, hello. And if it's not, welcome to the party, pal. All right. TLDR, this is a help desk issue. This is something that InfoSec needs to pair with heart help desk. You need to um, explain to help desk that if they're being yelled at, which does happen, that you need to stick to the protocol. That That's another technique. It's like either some sad sob story or it's like anger and threatening about your job and everything like that. So um, just be mindful of that. I don't know why they're targeting the health, uh, U.S. health department, honestly. I mean, healthcare is a is a good is a good target, but honestly, manufacturing, um, you might argue, is better. Maybe, hey, who knows? Maybe Scattered Spiders got a, um, running a tripod right now because they saw what uh, Black Cat LV did with uh, Change Healthcare, and they're like, "I need that twenty two million dollars. Twenty two million dollars is so hot." That Hansel's so hot. U.S. Right government now. contractor Acuity responds to alleged Five Eyes breach. Following up on a story we covered on Friday regarding the threat actor Intel Broker claiming to be in possession of documents belonging to the Five Eyes Intelligence Group, the contractor at the center of the storm has spoken up. The CEO of Acuity, Rui Garcia, told Security Week that it had, quote, recently identified a cybersecurity incident related to GitHub repositories, end quote, but confirmed that the data that was compromised was old and not sensitive. Security Week adds that Intel Broker is known for making false or exaggerated claims about obtaining U.S. government data. New York City because... All right. Um, so threat actors, here's the thing, right? Here's the deal, okay? So it came out the other day, Acuity. Um, I had made the comment during the, the brief that when this was covered that... Um, you know, Acuity might not uh, get their contracts renewed because this could be ugly. I also said how outrageous it would be for them to have had classified information on the, um, like on their unclassified machines. It does happen, but not often really. You know, I, I know in like movies, like Tom Cruise can just like walk in and walk out with a folder and he like, you know, waves his hand this way. Or, you know, you've seen the photos of like, uh, the, the former presidents, you know, or current presidents uh, having like classified information at their homes. Like, okay, those are more fringe cases. I'm telling you when you, um, when you're like, when you, I had a clearance, right? Like when you, I've been in top secret or I, not top secret, I've been in secret um, spaces, right? Like when you're in there, it's pretty tight. It feels pretty serious. You don't bring stuff in. You don't bring stuff out unless you clear it through like the skiff handler person. So like, for this acuity place to have it all, it seemed a little outrageous at the time. Now come to find out, it sounds like hackers did get some information, but they did not get anything sensitive, which more uh, lines up with data classification and sensitivity, uh, data handling and stuff like that. Um, now remember, threat actors are not obligated to speak truth. They do not need to be, you know, oh, you guys got us. All we got was a bunch of... Uh, Menus from the nearby restaurants for lunchtime. Oh, shucks. No. Threat actors executed their mission. They got data. They have assets. And now they're just trying to flex and see if they can cash in on it, right? Just because they um, threw a fishing net, right? And they pulled up an old boot and a tire and a turtle doesn't mean they're going to tell the company that they got an old boot and a tire and a turtle. They're going to say, oh my God, 
the size of the catfish we caught. Oh, brother, we'll be eating for days here. You better pay us or else we're going to let everybody see this big, big, hideous catfish. That's it. It was a, it was a um, it was a no. Uh, they had nothing to lose. These threat actors. Right. And uh, good. Good for acuity, not getting hit. And, uh, you know, obviously they did a deep dive afterwards and that's it. So. It the latest in municipal government hack attempts. According to the record, New York City's Office of Technology and Innovation, quote, was made aware of a smishing campaign targeting NICAPS users, end quote. Smishing is essentially phishing via text messaging, and NICAPS is the city payroll system, whose full name is New York City Automated Personnel System Employee Self-Service. The smishing campaign allegedly involved messages sent to city workers asking them to activate multi-factor authentication with a link to a phishing domain. NICAPS remains online and city employees have been advised to remain vigilant and to confirm the legitimacy of any NICAPS and payroll-related communications and activity. All right. So, I mean, I guess if I was going to attack a municipality, New York City seems like a good one. Threat Actor Academy... I'm not saying I endorse or support any attacks. I'm just, sometimes I want to be like in the reality, in like the headspace of a threat actor, because if you've studied, which I know this is going to get super nerdy, so I might even bust my glasses out. But if you study game theory, you know, the very simple principle is um, the adversary, the, the, the threat actor, they, they're on the other side of the game, right? Which is basically our, our life. And they are going to take actions that maximize their, you know, opportunities and minimize their risks. Same thing that we do, right? We invest our um, limited resources in the best controls to maximize our opportunity that of not getting hacked while reducing our risk of getting hacked, right? So it's, it's, it's classic game theory. So when I think about stuff like this, if I'm a threat actor, I can, I can, I can attack some 300 person municipality in like the plains of Oklahoma, or I can hit New York city. There's a higher return on investment. There's a higher, um, you know, just, just banger and municipalities in general, you should all know this please by now. And if you, if you're new here, I know there's a couple first timers take this with you. Municipalities are pretty soft targets. They, they're nonprofits for starters. Think about that. Right. So like they don't ever have like profit margins to invest back in. Cyber is, you know, New York City probably does have a cyber uh, kind of capability, but usually cyber is more of an IT function and you get to do cyber also, which means it's not committed or dedicated. Um, so, I mean, we even saw, we even saw uh, during the, oh my God, what was it? The Super Bowl that was held in New York a few years ago. They had the, you know, the Triborough, um, command center and on the screen they had like the wire like you know all the camera feeds and then they had a big huge like size 80 font of the wireless password right which i mean isn't a massive risk but it just goes to show you right like problems happen all over the place new york city huge return on investment uh it sounds like threat actors are just doing straight up phishing uh which is you know st standard protocol um for for attacking anyone you can see here the threat actors stood up a fake website. Again, any website on the internet that's publicly accessible, even if the inside isn't publicly accessible, like on the other side of this um, portal, if I can scrape it, I can simulate it, right? Maybe it wasn't the Super Bowl. I thought it was the Super Bowl. Hold on. I know the Super Bowl is typically not held in cold climates. I will get back to you on what it was. It was definitely, hold on. I will get this during the mid roll. Long story short, phishing landing pages are easy. Once a, a victim puts his credentials in here, uh, a more sophisticated threat actor can have it redirect to the actual website, the NY Caps website. And a victim might think, oh, I typed in my password incorrectly. Let me try it again. And then they will successfully log in. And then the threat actor actually has a copy of the credentials. You see what I'm saying? So multi-factor authentication, all the things. All right. If you're if you're listening, multi-factor authentication, all the things. Second of all, um, educate your uh, end users on not falling for fishes. Third, put a security gateway, email gateway in, in between. Maybe a nice one like uh, Palo Alto, I mean, not Palo Alto, uh, Proofpoint, Mimecast, 
Microsoft Exchange Online protection, like all of those are good options. A lot of them have like dynamic capabilities to be updated automatically. So anyways, t I mean, tell people, take a, take a, take a beat, take a breath before you put your creds in something. Because if you don't, oh boy, you could get popped. Just put freaking, just put freaking multi-factor on things, okay? Over 92,000 internet-facing D-Link NES devices found vulnerable. A researcher known as NetSecFish has revealed a new arbitrary command injection and hard-coded backdoor flaw that affects multiple D-Link NES devices. The vulnerability is being tracked as CVE 2020. Uh-huh. Super Bowl 2014, Super Bowl 48, right there. In New York, more actually in New Jersey. Okay. For three two seven three, an attacker can exploit the flaw to achieve command execution on the affected devices and then gain access to potentially sensitive information, alter system configurations, and create a denial of service situation. NetSecFish states that over ninety two thousand internet facing devices are still vulnerable. A list of the affected models is available in the show notes to this episode. All right. So this has got to be, um, you, okay. So this isn't Shodan. This is something called FQFA, which looks a lot like Shodan. Uh, a researcher disclosed an arbitrary command injection, which means like basically um, it doesn't have to be specially, specially uh, crafted uh, against D-Link NAS models. Now, we 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 typically crap on Zixels and QNAP up in this uh, stream. So, D-Link, welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal. Um, so, guys, here's the deal. D-Link devices are typically for um, Soho, uh, to use a, a, a term that BSEC dropped on stream last Thursday. Small uh, office, home office, uh, personal devices. You may have a D-Link nas device for your um for your like home cloud solution so you can access your videos and your music while you're on the road not to be confused with nas from illmatic i know i've got strong opinions about nas not being a top five rapper i will fight people about that joe hudson huge nas fan i don't know where people stand on nas i say jiff and i also think nas may be top 10 um but he, he's he's like he's like fringe top 10. Um, so the TLDR guys, run a scan on your network, see if you can find these devices. Also might want to go to Shodan and search for this device um, or this device these devices within your IP space. Uh, what I do not recommend you do is scan this and then start trying to pop things in like on the internet. That is a illegal. That's a bad one. Um, Oh, Valentina. Jay-Z's good. Jay-Z's very good. Um, okay, you can see here, this is a screenshot of uh, network traffic, probably from Wireshark. Right-click, show TCP stream. Um, and you could see that they're able to basically push, looks like base64 encoded commands through the URL. So this is very, basically, if you can access it with a web browser, or burp suite or something like that, curl, you can pop it. If you're running these versions, DNS 320L, DNS 325, it's too bad they use the term DNS. I mean, that's kind of already uh, appropriated. Thank you. Jesse Johnson's in the in my camp. D, uh, like I look at the stream numbers, we're at 407, I make the Nas comment and we just dip to like 180. But a fervent 180, who agree? I will say that I liked the movie Belly. A lot. I've seen Belly like, I don't know, 30, 40 times. All right. Long story short, if you're running one of these devices, you are definitely at risk. Get it fixed. And now a word from our sponsor, Vanta. The average security pro spends nearly a full workday every week just on compliance. With Vanta, you can automate compliance for in-demand frameworks like SOC 2, ISO 27001, and HIPAA. 
Even more, Vanta's market-leading trust management platform enables you to unify security program management with a built-in risk register and reporting, and streamline security reviews with AI-powered security questionnaires. Over 7,000 fast-growing companies like Atlassian, Flow Health, and Quora use Vanta to manage risk and prove security in real time. Watch Vanta's on-demand demo at vanta.com slash CISO to learn more. That is V-A-N-T-A dot com slash CISO. All right, let's roll. Party, pal. This is the mid-roll. We play good music. We high-five each other, and we do a little little something to break it up. Uh, if you are getting value from the stream, do me a favor. Hit the like button if you're on YouTube. I don't care about the vanity metrics. I never go back and look at the number. All it does is help the YouTube algorithm trigger to basically put the stream in front of other people who are looking at cybersecurity content on YouTube. It's as simple as that. It's a it's a lightweight hack, right? Little Black Hills shirt. So hit the like button if you're getting, only if you're getting value. It's like something very simple to do to, to give it me a hand. I want to say again, thanks to the stream sponsors, Barricade Cyber and Anti-Siphon for their longtime support. Huge fan, love Anti-Siphon training. I love Barricade Cyber Solutions. Um, and all the people, basically all the people at both of those companies are phenomenal. Casually Joseph's in chat. Eric Taylor's always around. All right, guys. I want you to know Luke Walter currently has, Luke Walker has the baton right now. If you would like to blow up your social media feed, James McQuiggan with the super uh, subs. Thank you, James McQuiggan. Guys. Hey, if you want to blow up your professional network, it's very simple. Go on to LinkedIn, search for the hashtag you can see at the bottom of the screen right now, hashtag simply cyber community challenge, and basically comment and connect with the people who are posting about that. It's very easy. Five minutes a day, you will blow up your feed. I guarantee you within a week, your feed on LinkedIn will be much more valuable. You'll be seeing resources conversations good people it's all about good times now every day we have someone take the baton and we need someone to pick up the baton today luke walker luke aka sky walker please can you tag somebody uh jenny is is luke walker in the chat i don't know if luke walker's in chat if you want the baton please uh overtly say hello i'd like the baton just so we can identify you all right, guys. Hey, every single day of the week has a special segment. And Mondays, I love Mondays. Mondays is Simply Cyber Community Member of the Week. Guys, I'm I'm one part of Simply Cyber, but the community is made up of hundreds, if not thousands, of amazing people. And I like to feature one. Today's a special one. I want you to um, I'd like to introduce you to Tyler Ramsby. South Dakota's own Tyler Ramsby. Now, Tyler has his own YouTube channel and community, but um, like there's a lot of overlap between people and community and uh, mission. Zatalpa, Zatalpa, please tag somebody. Zatalpa. So, guys, all I wanted to tell you is if you don't know Tyler Ramsby, I want to share this with you really quickly. Where are we? Where are we? Are we? All right, so Tyler Ramsby, he has his own server that does like mentoring and all sorts of other stuff. And it's it's awesome. Here you go. Hack Smarter with Tyler Ramsby. Go like if you're if you like our community, may I recommend going and checking out um, Tyler's community, Hack Smarter. Tell him Simply Cyber sent you or tell him you're a member of the Simply Cyber community. Also, if you want to know what kind of person Tyler is. He, he posted this video over the weekend, very passionate, very passionate uh, video about being the anti-influencer. He hates that people grift people looking to break into the industry, and that's why he has Hack Smarter. So if you're interested, check out this YouTube video if you want like a little taste of who Tyler Ramsby is. Great person. Love myself some Tyler. He came on the Discord AMA event uh, last Friday uh, unexpectedly, and we loved having him. So. Uh, tell them Simply Cyber sent you or just tell me remember Simply Cyber Community. Either way, I promise you, you will be happier um, knowing Tyler. He's a great, great person. All right, let's get back to the news, shall we? 
Hackers exploit Magento bug to steal e-commerce payment data. Researchers from the e-commerce fraud detection company Sansec say they have discovered a, quote, cleverly crafted layout template in the database being used to automatically inject malicious code to execute arbitrary commands, end quote. This has allowed bad actors to inject a persistent backdoor into e-commerce websites by leveraging CVE 2024-20720, which has a CVSS score of 9.1. This is a flaw that was addressed by Magento in updates released on February 13th of this year. The hack injects a Stripe payment skimmer to capture and exfiltrate financial information to another compromised Magento store. Univer All right. All right. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, this is a 2024 vulnerability with a, a CVSS score 9-1. All right, here we go. Check it out. If you're running an online store or you're responsible for an online store, you're an MSP for a bunch of small businesses that are running an online store. Get in the Wayback Machine and go back to 2000, I don't know, 13, 2014, when credit card skimming and point of sale system breaking was all the rage. All the kids were doing it. If you were coming up in the scene in the early 2000 uh, teens, you know about this. Magento, Fin was it Fin 11? Really quick, I see Anthony Egobamian. Anthony Egobamian with the baton. Go ahead and crush it, uh, Anthony. So here's the deal. You know what? If there's money there and people aren't looking at it, that's where they're going to go. So the TLDR here is there's a bug in this, uh, the Magento platform. Uh, my suspicion is if you're like, um, say you're like a, um, a food truck, right? Say you're a food truck and you've got like one of those like little square, um, you know, point of sale system terminals or whatever. That's not you. You're not in scope here. This is like, this is a um, like a website for a business that has set up a payment portal and they're doing some type of the transaction on their side with a Stripe interface. Now, a lot of uh, online web platforms now offer a lot of the baked in functionality uh, for you to be able to take transactions and stuff. Teachable, for example. Teachable, I use Teachable for the Simply Cyber Academy. All of the payment stuff is completely out of my scope. I'm not, I don't have to be PCI anything. Uh, take it easy, Jenny Housley. Thank you for all you do, Jenny. Mod love. Um, so I don't have to worry about PCI or doing any of these other things, but there is more functionality, more that you can do if you build your own website So, uh, or your own payment portal. Here's the deal. If you're running Magento, which looks like it's an Adobe product, then be mindful. It sounds like you could get cracked uh, by this attack. It says that the... Uh, I mean, if you want to get into the details, the Magento layout parser with some uh, default um, asset package can execute system commands. So that's it. Dude, when you have to do vulnerability management, you have to patch the operating systems, the firmwares, the applications, the middlewares, the drivers, and yes, even this um, web server payment platform. Now, the final thing I'll say about this, and if you're new here, I do like to provide some level of, um, I don't know, like classroom theory education with some of these stories. This is a perfect one. Here's the deal. When you work in, like when you work in cybersecurity for a, you know, a large organization or really any organization, but typically the large ones, you can't just patch this, right? Like, oh, hey, here's a patch, patch it. Got to patch it, patch it, patch it, patch it. Guess what? The business is going to be like, Brosif, we take orders 24 seven. So you're talking about patching this and bringing the server down for how long? How long are we not going to be able to take payments? Jerry, how long are we not going to be able to get paid? How long is someone going to come try to buy something from our website, see that it's down, and then go to a competitor and give them their money? How long, Jerry? And if you don't have a good answer, you don't know what it looks like. If you, you know, typically you might have a fallback plan where you can spin up a, a server, patch the production one, and then bring that server down and bring the production back up so you don't have downtime, whatever it is. Dealing with impact and downtime is a real thing. And you might actually get the business to say, okay, listen, we take you seriously. 
We will let you patch this between midnight and 3 a.m. on Saturday night, our slowest time of the, the week. Of course, I mean, also worth noting, we cybersecurity people don't patch these things. The application owner or the web server team or the application team or the IT team, depending on what size organization you're running, they would be responsible for it. So now you're asking them to be up from midnight to 3 a.m. This is why bringing cookies and Krispy Kreme and, and just genuinely engaging uh, with those counterparts is very valuable. Final pro tip, final pro tip for everybody. I would strongly encourage that you like the only team, the only time an IT team sees you is when you're asking them to do stuff for you. Not a good look. You should not make it um, that kind of relationship. All right. All right. Let's go. City of Winnipeg staff and students have sensitive data stolen. The university, located in the central province of Manitoba in Canada, has confirmed an incident that took place in late March. The data stolen includes a standard PII as well as compensation information of all current and former employees since 2003 and with everyone employed since 2015 also having their bank account information seized. No further details on the nature or source of the hack have yet been revealed. Malware's all right. So university, higher ed, welcome to the party, pal. Basically, if you're not swimming in the, the crystal clear blue waters of the Caribbean financial services market, i.e. that like the most well-funded of all of them, if you're, if you're like um, in a cement pond that isn't really cleaned of higher ed and local state municipality, um, I'm, I'm basically saying those, those ponds are like, you know, they got the, like the bugs floating on them and stuff like that. Like, like the, the, the floor of the pond is all uh, slimy and stuff. That's higher ed and that's local state municipalities. This is why they get hit often is because they don't, first of all, higher ed, like a university, they're all about like knowledge share and sharing research and let's connect and work together. It's all about collaboration. Let's solve the problems together. It's really, really cute. And again, I did research for a period of time. So like, I know like what it is and why it's important to those stakeholders. But for someone trying to um, maintain data security, information security, as we used to call it before it got that hot, sexy new title, cyber, it's a nightmare. RN users are actively connecting to all sorts of things, copy and pasting all the things up on the interwebs. Um... So a hacker stole sensitive information during an incident. Let's see if it says any particular thing. The stolen information likely includes personal of former students and employees. All right, here's another one. The victims are not the school. The victim is people who worked or went to that school. Very nice. It just sucks, man. This seems again and again to be like the status quo is... Um, you know, it, it, it's like, it's like third party impact. Like I didn't do anything wrong. I'm super secure. And yet my data is out on the interwebs now because somewhere I went to school, didn't handle it. You'll notice names, social insurance numbers, date of birth, et cetera. Just pairing this data dump with the um, first area, first story we talked about calling multi-factor authentic or calling help desk at um, organizations to get creds reset and configure new multi-factor authentication. That's where this data can come from. Hey, I just need your date of birth. Hey, I just need uh, the last four of your social. Hey, I just need your phone number. Can you confirm these, these items? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Hello, Dr. Osier. What can I do for you today now that you have verified your identity? Oh yes, I'd very much like to change my password and put a new uh, phone on my account. My account's been compromised. So that's how this information can be used. Obviously, they can uh, individually target uh, victims as well for spear phishing campaigns. If they find a, a particular fat whale, somebody who's got deep pockets and, um, you know, someone they can basically attack. All right. So, man, InfoSec, you got to be vigilant. You got to. Oh, by the way, I forgot. With this particular story, you got to patch it. You gotta patch it. Spreads through Facebook pages impersonating AI brands. 
As expected, cybercriminals are now taking over Facebook pages and using them to advertise fake generative artificial intelligence software loaded with malware. Researchers at Bitdefender say the actors use malvertising to impersonate products like Midjourney, Sora AI, ChatGPT5, and others. They make the pirated pages appear to be run by, quote, well-known AI-based image and video generators, end quote, to which they include news stories and ads that lead to downloads containing info-stealing malware. Bitdefender notes this campaign is currently focusing largely on countries in Europe, adding that the criminals have, quote, tremendous reach through Meta's sponsored ad system, end quote. And now... All right, here we go. It was inevitable that this was going to ha- happen, okay? So really quick, let me, I, well, hold on. Let me tell you the story first, and then let me break it down from a theory perspective. Because we've seen this time and time again, right? A song as old as time. I don't know. A brew as good as wine. Beauty and the Beast. I, like, I, I don't remember how the song goes. But you know what I'm talking about with Miss, Miss, Miss Copperpot or whatever? Little Chip. Bell. I always try to sing that song. I do it wrong. Here's the deal. This particular attack, threat actors are saying, hey, I've got a really great AI tool that can do these cool things. Download it here for free for a trial. First 50 images are free, whatever. Yes, exactly. Shall we play a game? You've got, um, you know, people without um, discretion, people who might not have the finances, people who want to dabble. Dude, we're seeing all sorts of explosive uh, businesses pop up using AI to to expedite things, right? So, of course, it's like, oh, hey, cool. I can do this. I can download this. I can use this. I've heard of MidJourney. I've heard of Dolly 3, right? Ooh, this is like hot new stuff. And then all threat actors are doing is basically it's malware. They're using Facebook ads. We've seen Google ads in the past be done, but basically Facebook ads, threat actors are investing tens of thousands of dollars in advertising. So their result comes up a lot in your feed and your Aunt Donna's feed and your cousin Patrick's feed and you know your sister's boyfriend who's always got a hot idea on how he's going to crack the market. It shows up in their feed. They see it over and over again. And hey, why would it be showing up top in my feed unless it was legit? There's no way a criminal would do this. Download, install, pop up. Hey, it looks like you're installing malware. Click, 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 click. Pwned. Now, a couple things to point out. One, victims are going to be spurious, right? Like you don't know who is going to fall for this and who's going to um, get um, uh, compromised. So as a threat actor, you're basically playing a numbers game, hoping that you scoop up some juicy bits, some some high-end resources. Maybe you get a a company machine, not a personal machine. Maybe you get a CEO's machine or serial entrepreneur's machine instead of, you know, my 12-year-old's computer where it just has like Fortnite on it, right? So, you know, this attack is, is fine and it's effective, but you've got to remember... Um, that, I mean, this is why threat actors don't give a damn, sorry, Kennedy with, um, with ransomware because they just want to deploy it because it's a numbers game. All right. Now let me, let me take you back, uh, to the theory part of this. Threat actors are going to take whatever is hot, right? Hot, whether it's the world cup in Qatar, whether it's AI image generating solutions whether it's Zoom when the pandemic first hit, March 2020, whatever like is hot, threat actors are going to identify and then they're going to make malware and say it's the hot thing. Like whatever the hot thing is. Spider-Man 3, before it launched in theaters, there was one you could download off of Torrent. Guess what? Malware. Zoom client, first in the results during the pandemic, guess what? You download it, malware. So the, the 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 lesson here, the theory under it is threat actors are constantly going to target whatever the hot thing is. They're going to make malware for it. They're going to pay to have it show up in results. And then they're just going to start harvesting you know, their crops, basically. The hot thing is them looking at the farmer's almanac, making the fake malware or making the malware itself is spreading the seeds 
pain to have it show up in feeds is them watering the seeds and then sitting back and waiting to see which ones grow. And once they start growing, they get the John Deere out and they just start tilling the field or not tilling, but harvesting. And then when they get back to the farm, that's when they go through all of their bounties, all of their crops and figure out, oh, this is a bad apple. This is a bad apple. Holy crap. This could win a blue ribbon at the 4-H fair, right? That's what's up. Last week in ransomware. Last week was a busy week for ransomware with attacks targeting VMware, ESXi, and other virtual machine platforms. Omni Hotels suffered a massive virtual machine-related ransomware attack that impacted its company's reservation system and disabled phones and room door lock systems. Chilean hosting provider IX Metro PowerHost suffered a ransomware attack on its VMware ESXi servers, which then created a cascade effect on IX Metro's customers' virtual private servers. We also reported last week on the British city of Leicester and Japanese lens manufacturer Hoya suffering cyber attacks, as well as Prudential Insurance and luxury boat maker Marine Max providing updates on their February attacks. Also, the Microsoft product OneNote came under scrutiny last week as a primary tool for delivering ransomware due to its ability to circumvent email attachment blocking rules and other detection methods. Typically, demonstrating why customers should trust your organization relied on static information validated by third parties. But this denies the ability for trust to be a differentiator for your organization. All right. Hey there. Nothing to see here. Blah, 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 blah. All right. So, hey, if you didn't know, it's been a minute since um, it's been a minute since we've had a weekend roundup. But I want you all to know that basically CISO series does a nice job of collecting on Monday all of the, you, or I think it might be on Friday, but all of the um, hits from the previous week. Think of this as a yard sale, okay? Whether it's your industry, your, your, your organization size or your location, um, <laughs> um, there's going to be a story here for everybody. Hospitality, Omni Hotels suffered a ma massive outage. Not good. Um, that's like a double whammy too, because um, there was that recent research about cracking any uh, hotel key. They were unable to do their reservation system, door lock system. Uh, the outage was so severe, guests had to contact a hotel employee to let them in their rooms. That is not good. Um, I bet you they paid the ransom, honestly. Chilean hosting provider, you into ISPs? Done. VMware ESXi chassis completely owned. We saw that last week. Obviously, they're not watching the Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. Um, couple stories here. Nothing too crazy. I mean, there's only a few, but they're kind of major. Uh, Panera got taken down. Again, <laughs> Panera didn't say in their story it was a ransomware, but me, you, and um, Leatherneck Cyber Warrior knows that it was definitely a ransomware. All right. Hey, uh, really quick. Good news. Uh, that was coffee that I knocked over. There was only maybe a, I don't know, quarter cup. I have a, pre I have a pretty good desk. Uh, and I don't, I don't put sugar. I drink my coffee black. So there was no, there's no sticky, <laughs> there's no sticky icky, uh, situation on my desk. And I, I keep my phone, uh, on a, like an elevated magnet thing. So that's fine. The only thing that possibly was impacted was a trackball mouse. And uh, it's actually my my emergency backup one because the scrolly thing's kind of screwed up. All right, let's go. That was incident response too, by the way. All right, guys, if you were here just for the news, you 440 beautiful people, uh, give me a hot minute. I want you all to know that this Thursday, Savannah Lazara... Offensive Security Pro and Red Team Village member. You can see her right there. She's going to be my guest on Simply Cyber Live this Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We got a banger. She's an engineer. She's a speaker. She was on the panel at Red Team Village uh, keynote. She's awesome. She's also got uh, bioengineered technology sewn into her hand. No joke. You think a Flipper Zero is awesome? This professional, she's got like basically like a flipper zero injected into her body. 
So uh, come hang out with Savannah. Get to know more about her. We'll talk red team stuff. We'll talk con season. All the good things. Let's go. Brian Bates getting ready for a Zoom interview. Yes, sir. All right, guys. If you were here just for the news, I want to say thank you very much. Genuinely appreciate all of you. Want to remind you that we have jaw jacking coming up right now. So if you want to hang out a little bit longer, if you want to get your questions answered, before I go really quickly, if you are studying for the Security Plus, if you want to, secu- if you're studying for Security Plus and you're looking for an epic way to do it, may I interest you in Slay Security Plus? Jesse Johnson, who's in chat right now, he has been running Slay Security Plus on YouTube for a few weeks, and this particular. This particular uh, channel, here's the the video. Every Thursday at 7 p.m., he goes live with community members, and he'll do a live stream, but there's questions on the screen, and you can play along by answering them in real time, and then he'll go through the answers of all of them. It's an amazing way to study for Security Plus that does not feel, um, it feels very community-driven. And uh, Jesse does a great job with it. So if you're studying for Sec Plus, that's where you want to be. All right, guys. I appreciate all of you. If you want to hang out and do some jaw jacking, let's go. But I have to, I do have to uh, jump into my alter ego. So I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. Thank you so very much. We'll be back tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern time for episode 596. I'm Jerry, your chat. Until next time, stay secure. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the party. I'm your host for Jaw Jack and Jerry Guy. Coming hot off the heels from that nerd, Dr. Gerald Ozier's Daily Cyber Threat Brief. What we're going to be doing for the next 30 minutes, if you want to stick around, is answering any and all questions you might have about cybersecurity work, resources, networking, industry, realities of industry. It's all about good times. Let's get into it. How's everybody doing? I hope everybody had a good weekend. Some college basketball going on. My family's back. Yay! (gasps) Missed my family. I will tell you, if you didn't know DJ BSEC in chat, he also has a Twitch channel where he spins as a, like literally, that's why he's called DJ BSEC. It's not like his his initials are DJ. Um, And he did a Gen X party on Saturday night. I was there. Space Tacos was there. It was a lot of fun. Ima Aquara, do we have some more first timers up in here? Is this your first time on jaw jacking? If it is, oh, you want the top five? Jizz is really good. Black Thought, yeah. All right, so I would say, um, okay, so for sure, I think Biggie is number one. Okay, Biggie and Tupac, one one A. Biggie and Tupac. Do, do you understand Tupac died at 26? Think about how much, how impactful and how unbelievable Tupac's legacy is. And he died at 26. He hadn't even really got it going. Biggie and Pac. I think Jay-Z's up there. Um. Oh my God. I mean, I really like, I like Outkast. I love, I mean, I wouldn't consider the Roots uh, hip hop, but um. Let me see. Eminem. Listen, Eminem is unbelievable. Eminem has like 30 Grammys. Okay. I think, uh, I actually think Kanye West is overrated. I mean, he's, he can make some good music, but his, his, his lyrics are terrible. Um, I think Jay-Z's up there. Yeah. Somebody said MF Doom earlier. MF Doom is excellent. RZA. RZA's really good at making music. Um, so I'll, I'll also tell you, um, 
my favorite albums of all time in no particular order midnight marauders tribe called quest midnight marauders um uh the roots things fall apart is quite excellent and then, i mean this is for hip-hop right obviously like the midnight's entire catalog is up there uh hey rex with a super chat we just become best friends yep. the only superhero puts his glasses on to utilize his power nice I will tell you, I saw a 50 Cent in concert. Maybe the worst concert I've ever seen. Completely mailed it in. Fun fact, I know it's not Tuesday, but uh, Tidbits Tuesday, I always share personal stuff. Um, I have seen The Roots in concert more than any other group I've ever seen in concert. All right. Oh my God, Gangstar, Nick, you nailed it. I will say Gangstar, um, full clip. That's kind of a cheap, cheap out because full clip is like a double album. And it's like, <laughs> there's like 60 songs on it. But, uh, yeah, uh, that's really good. All right. So check it out. we got some questions coming in. David Atkinson. I currently work in telecom as a lead circuit designer. I will graduate with my degree in cyber to October. Oh, in October. What are some entry level jobs to look for within networking with networking experience? Well, all right. So the networking experience, David, is um, that's going to be helpful, but it's not like a job specific. So, you know, SOC analyst would be more of an engineer role. Did we get a baton pass? Uh, mods, can, did we get a baton pass? Let me know. Um, yeah, I think someone already got it. Uh, D Barry, definitely come back tomorrow. Uh, hey, with your lead circuit design, you may want to look at a manufacturing company, big tech or something like that. Just something that you can like parlay your understanding of what the business does and then either work in GRC because you're going to be interfacing with the business a lot or as a SOC analyst in-house. Um, I, I just think that there's some uh, areas of opportunity for you to be able to leverage your pre-existing knowledge base to understand... Um, you know, how, how the business works and, and, and basically deliver value on that. I will tell you, um, David, you know, congratulations on the degree, very valuable, but make sure you're getting practical experience. The degree is good and the degree gives you like perspective and visibility over a bunch of different areas, but the degree alone will not uh, make you differentiated from other candidates. The degree alone is not enough. You need to have practical experience, which you can get before you get the job. You can do labs. There's a great SOC analyst lab on my uh, YouTube channel. There's a playlist. I'll just go grab it for you uh, if you want to do that. Also, David, network with people like you are doing right now in chat. That's Yeah, Tribe's awesome. I know some people say like Black Star, which was kind of like a... Um, a project for Mostef and Talib Kweli, but I don't know. It's, it's all right. All right. Um, so at David Atkinson, give that a shot. All right. Hopefully that helps. Um, all right. Keith Sloan, last week we were talking about special guest for your trip in June. Any chance, you know, Rana Cahill, my trip in June. Oh, 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 guest hosts. So I will tell you right now, we have Tyler Ramsby. We do have DJ BSEC. I do not know a Rana Khalil. Um, I don't know Rana Khalil. I, I will tell you, Keith. Um, I mean, if I met them, that might be fine. And we could do that. You've, you've got to remember, like, the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing, it, 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 it is complicated, like running it. You also have to have the ability to speak to whatever story shows up. You have to be here at, you know, 7.45 a.m. Eastern time to deliver. And, I mean, honestly, I've, I've got to know who you are because this is, we're all one community, but like simply, I can't, I can't introduce undue risk by having somebody I don't know run my stream. That would be, that would be, um, that would be risky. But I appreciate it. I would like to meet Rana Khalil. 
you're recommending them, that'd be cool. Ima Aquara says, for someone that is not in tech but trying to get into GRC, is the SEC Plus exam really hard to get and pass? I plan to join the group on Discord. So Ima Aquara, uh, the SEC Plus, it, it's all relative on how hard it is. You have to put in the time, the effort. I will say that the SEC Plus is a multiple choice exam. So technically, you could exam cram and then brain dump and not actually know anything but be able to pass it. I would say that you should get it. Of only of all the certs in the industry, that is the one that um, you see a lot on job racks, DOD 8570. It, it does have market value and it's used by HR. So just be mindful of that. Um, I would say go to Slay Security Plus, right? Um, Ima Aquara. Let's see what screen shows up on my camera here. Oh, there's my... Uh, this is my, every once in a while when this shows up, I know people who have been here a long time already see this. This is my teleprompter. So <laughs> this is what I look at when I'm talking to y'all. So I don't feel like I'm just staring into a camera lens. So hello, Simply Cyber community. You guys dressed all, dressed to the nines. Very cool. All right, let me get this right. All right, so Slay Security Plus, Ima Aquara. I'll drop a link in chat. This is really, really going to be uh, worth it. You will definitely, trust me, if you're studying for SEC Plus or thinking about it, this is this is the answer key. You can do it alone, but why? Why not have a community? All right. Oh, my God. Wu-Tang's, Wu-Tang's good. Here's the thing. Wu-Tang, in my opinion... Um, enter 36 chambers is like Wu Tang's best album. I don't like their other albums, black flag. Like I, I know killer bees. Like I never really got into it. And then their independent work, like, okay. ODB had a couple good tracks, like liquid swords on its own was amazing to Cal method man. I feel like method man may have been the most successful independent artist. Cuban links took too long to come out. All right, Ronna Khalil, she's got a... Hold on. Damn, Ronna On YouTube, how, how do I not know about her? This is great. Cool. Thank you. She holds a bachelor's and a master's in comp sci, OSCP certified. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll ping her. She's got a... I mean, she obviously knows how to make content. That's another thing, like... Dude, like running a stream is not trivial. She's only got 184 videos and 72,000 subs. This is awesome. Awesome. She's with David Bumble on Udemy. So cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, um, let me, uh, hold on. Let me, let's, let's see if she's around. Rana. Oh my God, bruh. Yes, we're, we're, we're only a second degree um, connection here. Send with, uh, add a note. Hi, I'm Jerry, Simply Cyber, um, cyber professional and YouTube co uh, content creator. Wanted, wanted to connect. All right, I'll let you guys know how it goes. That could be fun. All right. Cuban Libertarian coming in with a super chat. Can we just become best friends? Yep. Already in GRC, study cert recommendations to fill technical gaps and start consulting. Hmm. Well, um, yeah, I mean, so Cuban, what I would say is, you know, obviously that SOC analyst, um, this SOC analyst playlist, it, it, this, it's not a coincidence that I always uh, recommend it right here. Because th this has a lot of like standing up technical stuff, looking at attacks, stuff like that. Um, also, depending on like your level of technical uh, expertise, um, I got this cheat sheet, right? And it goes through like networking basics, malicious malware traffic, 
um, you know, like basically this is all for getting technical uh, on the um, networking side. Then I got some stuff on operating systems. So uh, I don't know where your technical deficiencies lie, but these are great, great resources um, to, to start on. Um, here, let me drop this in link for you. Just go here. If you go here, uh, who asked me that question? Oh, shit. Yeah, hold on. I've got a lot going on. Um, I don't know who asked the question about consulting, and uh, but whoever asked for it, I'm sorry. Here's the link to the cheat sheet. If you want the cheat sheet, right? If you want this cheat sheet. Oh, by the way, I like made videos also for every single resource. So like, what do you actually need to pay attention to with those resources? Come on, bro. Whatever, trust me, there's a video here. It's not working. Um, there we go. Oh, look at all these nice things people say. I, I hadn't seen this yet. Look at this, all these nice people saying nice things. That's cool. Okay, here we go. See, there we go. I'll giddy up on that. All right. We do have a couple things popping today. I've got a video premiering at nine. Um, give, me, give me one second. I, whoever said it in chat, thank you, because I got a couple things here. Uh, I've got a video premiering at, um, I think it was Space Tacos, but somebody asked me on, um, somebody asked me last week on, fr on oh my God, bro. Somebody asked me last week, um, hey, do you know, do you have a video about technical PM? What's the job and um, how's it different than cybersecurity? And I said, I don't have a video for that. I interviewed a base case, uh, AKA Casey Gaska, AKA uh, Mod, also very, very, very first number one Simply Cyber Squad member. Um, I interviewed him, filmed it, and then cut it up and posted it. And this will drop at 9.30 a.m. today. So in about uh, 22 minutes, if you want to watch that. Also, I, I want to, rem I want to, I'll drop this on chat later. I've got a, you, uh, I have a LinkedIn post dropping in um, at 9.20 that it, it's like a sponsored post. So I wanted to share that with everybody and hopefully get a little bit of support from you all uh, to push it. I want to share something outrageous that you guys may not know. Like I post stuff on LinkedIn all the time. Look at this nonsense. I'm going to repost this. I posted this. I posted this. This is a list of 24 awesome OSINT resources. And then a link to a video I made showing you how all of them work. Right? I think it was a pretty cool post. LinkedIn, four impressions. Four impressions. This is the most suppressed post I've ever seen in my life. So I will be tearing it down and republishing it. But anyways, uh, just wanted to share that with y'all. Outrageous. All right. What are your thoughts on getting a PhD in cyber versus getting a second master's in cyber? Um, okay, so Tracy... Tracy TLC, what are your thoughts on getting a PhD versus getting a second master's? Okay, so <laughs> it's kind of funny, Tracy, that you say that because I'm actually um, what I would consider uniquely qualified to answer that question because I do have a master's in information assurance and I have a PhD in cyber. Um, what I would say, and I have a master's in computer science, right? Just to kind of give everybody a lay of the land. What I would say is a master's in cybersecurity, awesome. You'll go uh, kind of deep and across a, duff, a bunch of different dimensions. You'll take 10 classes in a master's typically, and you will get exposed to a lot of things that you may not get exposed to in a normal professional setting. And it might um, in, enlighten you to other areas and uh, make you better at executing your actual job itself and help you discover other roles you might be interested in. A PhD is a completely different animal. A PhD is, um, and you know what? I got a video for it. Okay. Uh, let me see. Simply cyber. Wait, hold on. If anyone, if anyone out there is interested, um, 
This is one of my original videos. Look at this. Look how young this guy is. Everything you need to know, everything you need to know about getting a PhD before you get a PhD, okay? This is like one of my very first YouTube videos, okay? I'm going to tell you guys right now, if you are not passionate about wanting to get a PhD, do not go get a PhD. It's it's five years. I mean, you could get it in quicker time, three years, probably the quickest, but it's a very lonely journey. It's a very hard journey. The dissertation is a very hard um, project. And I'm not saying this to like segment people or be like, oh, you can't handle it. I'm just telling you, the shine of a PhD wears off very quickly and then you're just left alone holding a huge bag of work and there's only one way to get done and you need to work through it. I'm telling you right now, there's a term called ABD, all but dissertation. And it is a label that is given to people that get a PhD, go through a PhD program, finish all the coursework, which is basically like another master's. And then they have to do the dissertation and they don't do the dissertation. They they get burnt out, they get distracted, they keep kicking it down the road, their, their committee gets screwed up, their chair is a problem. Whatever it is, ABD is not a label people like. It's, it's derogatory if you point out someone as an ABD. So to Tracy's question, master's versus PhD, you can't even compare the two because a PhD is a completely separate thing altogether. If you are super passionate about the topic, if you like uh, professional, like uh, lifelong learning, if you like contributing in, you know, very, very structured uh, person, PhD is where it's at. Okay. Cyber Eddie, what are the options for meetups in smaller cities? I'm is going to a meetup in cons in big cities the only way. Um, no, I mean, there are smaller cities like uh, cyber ready. Obviously the larger populated areas are more likely to have meetups, but I would say, you know, there's a B sides like, cyber ready. Where do you like, what, what kind of, you, you know, don't give me your address, but like, where do you live? Like, maybe we can help you find something. Um, B sides, Augusta, Augusta, Georgia is not huge. Augusta, Georgia's B-Sides is phenomenal. If you've been to B-Sides Augusta, you know it's awesome. So, plus the Simply Cyber community meetups. Go check out that Cyber Ready uh, on the Discord server. DEF CON has local meetups. So, check that out. My dancing girl. Can we just give it up to Simply Cyber and demonstrate and on how quickly we can connect on a professional network? Quick note, adding value and send. Thank you, my dancing girl. Genuinely appreciate it and uh, super pumped that you're getting uh, value from the community. That's what we're here for. That's why it's a community. Um, yeah, I mean, so you can, I've seen people with swords. Brady McNulty got a sword. I don't know. I have a PhD like this. You can't really see it because of the angle, but like this is my PhD right here. It's like the only thing I hung up. I have... <laughs> I have like a bunch of degrees and stuff in, in a closet upstairs. Like, you know, I don't know. I, I typically don't flex on my, uh, my stuff. Um, I live near Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. Let's take a look. Let's see where Grand Rapids is. Grand Rapids, Michigan. Is that UP? Let's take a look on the map. Grand Rapids. You're not even UP. You're kind of like. So Grand Rapids looks like it's pretty far from Detroit. Chicago. Are you? You're like in between Chicago and Detroit, huh, bud? All right. Let's see. B sides. Uh, Lansing, Michigan. Let's see if there's a B sides Lansing, Michigan. There's a B sides Detroit, Michigan B sides. Looks like the Detroit B-Sides has kind of gone down. This guy's talking about potentially doing one in Lansing. This was a uh, uh, last reply, November, 2023. So this is just a few months old. Sysadmin after dark is trying to uh, 
coordinate one in Lansing. So there you go, Cyber Eddie. Now, Cyber Eddie, here's a perfect thing. Like if you want one, just because you may not be in the industry yet doesn't mean you can't help drive it. If you want a B-Sides in Lansing, Michigan, again, I don't know how far uh, Lansing is to Grand Rapids. Let's see. To Lansing driving. Let's see. It's only an hour away. Lansing's one hour away. Cyber ready. Giddy up on, on uh, helping drive. You know, get on that forum and say, hey, listen, I'm new to the industry, but I'll I'll volunteer to help set up B-Sides Lansing. Right? Take initiative. Take active. Be part of the network. Oh, apparently Gurkhan is in Grand Rapids. Holy crap. Eddie, looks like you don't need to... Uh, <laughs> Eddie, it looks like you don't need to uh, volunteer if you don't want. And there's a huge, huge conference right there in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So there you go. Even better. I, I see your B-sides and I raise you an amazingly super huge conference. Cyber Eddie, I hope you make it to Gurkhan. And thanks to Josh Mason and Chad for dropping that bomb. Very cool. Lydia Kidane, anyone near Charlotte? Lydia, I will say there's an entire upstate South Carolina Simply Cyber community contingent. John Hoyt's up in Clemson. Uh, Brandon Poole is in the Cola region. Did you guys see B-Sides Tampa this weekend? Regular who's who. Kimberly, Daniel Lowry, InfoSec Pat, Kev Tech IT. High fives everywhere. Chuck Sapp was in the house. Chuck Sapp crushing it. What other questions we got, guys? It's all about good times. Oh, my God. I don't know if you guys saw the uh, note, but um, Charles Finfrock is coming to town. Um, he's going to be teaching my Citadel class on Thursday. I do guest lectures. So Charles is flying into town and I, I was like talking to him on Saturday morning. I'm like, bro, um, like, you know, like micro courses or whatever. He's like, hell yeah. He's like, how about I fly in early Wednesday morning and we just film a bunch of micro courses. So Charles Finfrock is going to be doing courses for Simply Cyber Academy and he's going to film them in the studio, the Buffer Osier Flow studio. So I think that's pretty cool. I hope you guys are excited. He's got a, he's got a couple um, kind of banger video uh, course ideas. One of them is crypto. I'm a crypto evangelist. I love it, love it, love it. And you might say, well, what the heck does crypto have to do with GRC, Jerry? Um, well, imagine if you will having crypto on your books because you're you want to prepare for paying ransoms. Talk about how are you securing the wallets? What security controls do you need around cold storage, hot storage? What exchanges, what what can you expect and what should you be asking from exchanges for third party risk? Hmm? Right, you see, you see what I'm saying? It's pretty cool. So stay tuned for that. All right, just chilling. Where are we at here? Got this. Uh... Hey, uh, so I got a poll question for everybody. This is something that um, CJ pointed out and I wanted to get people's thoughts. And now after about 18 minutes, it's just, it's just simply cyber folks in here now. All right, please vote on this. Uh, I'm kind of curious. So the Simply Cyber Discord server is pretty busy. We could set up a separate Discord server just for Simply Cyber local meetups and have, you know, we could categorize it better. We could clean up the main Simply Cyber server. But I don't know. If, I, I'm still new to Discord. So I don't know if it's a hot mess to break the Discord server up into two servers. Or if you guys are fine. Uh, Tyler Ramsby came on and kind of like... Uh, you know, basically teased me a little bit on Friday about our Discord server being a bit of an overwhelming yard sale. So I was thinking of maybe having a dedicated 
channel that is like more of like at the very top that's like a menu of what the server is like i personally don't want to split the server up but i am um i'm i'm i i serve the community so i'm fine doing it if that's what the community thinks would be best oh jazzy jazz uh i'll post the linkedin one but i mean I'm going to I'm going to pull it down Jazzy Jazz, but I'll still if you want I'll I'll drop a link here. I am going to pull it down and repost it. Oh my god, what is this? Hold on, I'm trying to I'm trying to ugh. Bro Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, here we go, Jazzy Jazz. This is a link to the OSINT LinkedIn post. If you just want to see it, I mean, this this link will not work. Uh, this link will not work at some point. Oh my God. Like I'm, I'm hearing myself in a different, in a different freaking, there we go. All right, guys. I'm just, I'm here to answer questions. If you got them, the mods are uh, talking about uh, cleaning up the server, which is great. Uh, hopefully we're going to get that link. Hopefully the audio sounds good because it's like echoing back into my ear right now, which is really, really frustrating. All right. We got a couple minutes here. All right. So how many votes do we got? 56 votes. Please take a second and vote. This is a pretty big decision, honestly, um, that will affect the Simply Cyber community. So... I definitely think we need a different server for Simply CyberCon. I originally didn't create a separate server because I didn't. We piloted Simply CyberCon, uh, but now, um, now I'm convinced that Simply CyberCon will persist. So I've created its own YouTube channel. We will create its own server. Do you recommend the OSINT using Recon NG courses on LinkedIn? Looks cool. I haven't seen it before. Yeah, so Reed Hurlbert, I don't know the specific Recon NG courses you're talking about. What I will say is Recon NG is a really great tool, okay? It's a very good tool. It takes a bunch of OSINT tools and makes it very easy to do all of them all at once. I will say, I don't know the LinkedIn video course or not, but you need an actual use case to really learn recon ng like if you're just using recon ng and putting in like a couple different random things it'll be fine but i i personally have done that and i don't feel like any of the recon ng things stick you need kind of like a case study like what are you researching are you researching a person a business you know whatever um and then start that case and then do the do the um the recon ng search and how are you doing, Dr. Osher? How was your weekend? Lazaro Rivera asked. My weekend was great. I played a lot of Magic the Gathering. I cleaned the crap out of my house. So when my wife and kids got home, they could be in a nice, clean, like nice, clean, fresh sheets everywhere, uh, vacuumed space. And um, I watched, you know what I did? I, I did chill out a little bit. I've been working my A off, but I did chill out. I watched uh, this whole Netflix series called Third Eye or third world problem or something like that, or three world problem, something like that. It was all right. Sci-fi. All right. So the link for the video that drops soon, one second. I, I want to drop this post, this, this, uh, sponsored post thing here. Oh my God, bro. Where's the post? Where's the beef? All right. If this doesn't post right now, then I don't know. Maybe I'll do it live. 
What are we doing? Oh my god, what does this say? Your recent activity will only display content from the past 360 days? Oh my god, what is going on? Give me a second, I'm like trying to work this out now. You can watch me do it live. Start a post. Schedule. View scheduled posts. I scheduled this for 9.30. Let's post it now. How do I post now, bro? I don't want to schedule it. I want to post it. Ugh. Technology. You suck sometimes. I, I don't know, man. Whatever. That's going to schedule at 930. This is the perfect job, which is going to premiere in three minutes. Cuban Libertarian with a super chat. I have a business degree, risk management experience, SEC plus, C-risk, CT... PRA would love to work in blockchain, trying to consult for small law firms. That's cool. Yeah, Cuban Libertarian, you're definitely going to love um, Charles Finfrock. I'm a crypto evangelist. I love it, love it, love it. Here we go. There's the premiere at 9.30 a.m. Hopefully you guys can join me for that. Three body problem. Thank you. Three body problem. I watched it. I will tell you that it, it, it kind of was like, oh my God, like this is kind of lame. I stayed with it though. And it became fascinating at the end. Uh, eight episodes. Season one is um, it's well produced. It's, you know what? I, you know what? I didn't notice until the very end of the last episode. It's produced and created by the same two guys who basically did Game of Thrones. So if you're, if you're familiar with that, if this is based on source material, a sci-fi book, it will be phenomenal right up until they get done with the content of the book. I hope Three Body Problem is a completed story in the DBs, the Davids. I hope they don't have to create new content because um, no spoilers on Game of Thrones, but I did not like what they did with Game of Thrones at the end. All right. We got 94 votes. Um, I, I, that's not a third of votes. It's pretty tight here at 59%. So I'm a little like, yeah. Oh, good. Phil Stafford says the series completed. Then I'm on board. Let's go. All right. I'll just ask you. Oh, it jumps the shark. Okay. Um, if you didn't vote, please vote. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to do this premiere live together. Um, definitely appreciate that. Uh, remember Savannah, 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 what? Savannah Lazara is going to be our guest on Simply Cyber Live later this week on Thursday. So stay tuned for that. All about good times. How was everybody's weekend? Anybody do anything crazy this weekend? Since uh, people are asking me. Hey, Kathy Chambers. Kathy Chambers in the house. Oh, I want to remind everybody, if you did not know. Speaking of Kathy Chambers, if you did not know, Simply Cyber Cafe has begun posting all of the video, all of the videos of the jaw jacking. So like this one, B-Sex, Eric Taylor. So if you want April 3rd's jaw jacking, April 1st is jaw jacking, right? If you want those, come to the cafe. The cafe is available right here. I'll drop a link. In Where's the share button? How do I share the cafe? Well, whatever. I'll just do it this way. Here's the cafe. Giddy up on that. I think we're about ready to do this live stream, right? Or premiere. There we go. The premiere is hot right now. Let's go. I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. I hope you can come to this premiere with us. Premiere. Let's raid. Raid, raid, raid. All right, guys. I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. I'll see you in the raid right now. Bye. Oh, and let me close this tab. Looks like most people want a separate server.
Let's go.